Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating drop caps using the drop caps widget from our key add ons for Elementor plugin. At the moment, we're on the widgets landing page where we can see some examples that showcase what you can do with this text decoration. Starting from the most pared down versions that rely on your font selection, and then moving on to variations with different color backgrounds and text styles. This widget provides an enormous selection of fonts as well as numerous other typography options. You can frame it, give it a pattern, anything you like. The drop caps widget is perfect for anyone who wants to get a bit creative. So let's see how the drop caps widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin is used. Head over to the back end. And in the Elementor sidebar, search for drop caps. There it is. Drag the widget over to the right. And there we are. This widget contains some default content, but we'll be customizing it shortly. And while the first letter is very visually distinct here, we'll change it here along with the rest of the text. I'll just put in the same content from one of the examples on the landing page. Hold on, I'll speed through it. Alright, here it is. Now, while there's not a lot of options in the Content tab, we do have some left, namely the Developer Tools. When we open them, there's just one option here. If we switch its setting to Yes, it will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. That's this text. So we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, now we can move on to the Style tab and see what we have in there. The first thing we see in here is the letter typography. So these will be the typography options that apply to this one letter. And when we open them, we can see there's an option for the font family. You can browse this drop down, but if you know the name of the font you want to use, you can search for it here. That's what I'll do for mine. This is the one I want. Okay. Then we can change the letter size either using the slider or by setting a number value. I'll do the latter and set 51 pixels. Also, you can set the value to be in M's, RAM's, or the viewport width. Now, the rest of these options here, I'm going to skip them for now. They will be difficult to show when we're working on a single letter, so I'll go through them with you when we reach the typography options for the text. Getting back to the rest of the style settings, we have letter color. As its name suggests, this option lets us choose the color of our letter. You can set a hex code if you have a specific color you want to use. This is what I'll do now and set my letter to be dark blue. Okay, following that we have the letter holder size. Let me show you what it does. By increasing the value we increase the space that holds it. So we increase the room between it and the text. I'll leave mine at 93 pixels. After this we have the background type option which offers two choices. Classic and Gradient. With the gradient, we can pick the start color and then pick the end color. So start and end. And for the end, this will do. It's just an example of how the effect can look. So this option lets you create a gradient fill for your letter holder. If we switch to Classic, we can pick a single background color for the letter holder. I'll make mine white. OK. Another option that's available to you is this. You can choose to insert an image as the background for your letter. Let me show you how that would look. This and insert media. There it is. This is how the letter with the background image can look like. I'll remove mine as I only added it to show you. Okay, next we have the border type, where we can add a border around our letter. That border can be solid. I'll increase its width so it's easier to see. Then we have double dotted, dashed, and grooved. I'm going to opt for solid and I'll reduce its width to one pixel. Perfect. Then you can pick the color for your border with this familiar color picker. You can use a hex code or the slider here. I'll use a hex code. Just a moment. There, a lovely shade of blue. Now underneath this we have the letter border radius. We can use these fields to soften the edges of our borders. Let me show you. When we start to increase the values here, the edges get rounder and rounder. 
I want to have a circle, so I'll leave my values at 50 pixels. That looks pretty even all round, I'm keeping it. Then we have the letter stroke effect. If we enable this, we get a couple of new options and we can see our letter changes its look and becomes outlined. And we can easily change the color of that letter. Just pick something that works with your design. And if you think that the outline is too thin, you can make it thicker by increasing the value in letter stroke width, like this. So there's an option for you. I'll turn this off. Now the letter clip effect. I'll show you this a bit later, I'll make another example of drop caps for that. So moving on to the text typography option. I promised I'd show you what the rest of the typography settings do. These now will apply to the text, not the letter. So we have the font family option. I already showed you that one with the letter. This one is identical, only it applies to the text here. The size option works the same as well. So you can drag this slider or set a custom value. And now we can consider things like the weight option. It lets us turn the text bold or use one of the number values to find unit's weight. I'll put this back to default. Then we have the text transform option, which we can use to make our text uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal, which is the same as our default. And under style, we can make our text normal, or turn it italic or make it bleak, I'll leave mine as default. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or we can opt for none of these, which is actually our default. Then with the line height, we can adjust the height of the line with our text. It's in M's by default, but you can switch it to pixels. I don't think I need this now, so I'll just remove it. Following that, we have the letter spacing option. It gives us more space between letters. And that's it for the typography options. After that, we have the text color option. It lets us change the color of the text independent of the letter. So you can easily make them have different colors. Then we have the spacing style set of options. In here, we have the letter margin fields. With them, we can adjust the space that's outside the letter holder. If I increase the values and keep them linked, the space around my letter will expand evenly. But if I remove this and delink the fields, I'll be able to set a different value for each field. So I'll put one pixel at the top and increase the right margin to 16 pixels. And for the bottom, I'll put minus 2 pixels. Yes, you can absolutely use negative margins. And I'll leave the value for the left margin at zero. Okay, after this we have the letter padding option. Now this one applies to the space between the letter and its border. So I'll delink the values and add some padding at the bottom so that my letter will seem to be in the center of its circular border. There, this looks well balanced. And let me save my work. Now drop caps is all about how you combine the widgets options. So let me show you another example of what you can do. Going back to the widget menu, I'll search for drop caps again so I can add another example to my page. There, drag it over. And I'll copy the text from my earlier work as I just want something more meaningful than this pseudo Latin. So go to the content tab and copy the text. Then click on the new widget to select it and paste the content in the text field. There we are. Now let's open the style tab. And I'm not going to explain every option all over again. I'll just run through another possible blend of style settings to show you what combining the options can get you. So in typography, I'll set the size to be 95 pixels. And then I'll make the weight 700. Following that, I'll use the classic background type and set my background color to be white. There. And now the option I promised to show you. Letter clip effect. When we enable it, we get one additional option. And don't worry, the letter hasn't vanished, it's been cut out or clipped out. So the white background is coming through and that's why we can't see it. The letter clip effect lets us create a different look for the letter itself. I'll show you what I mean. So if we click on classic in this new option, we can set a color for our letter. Or we can switch to gradient and set up our letter with a two color gradient fill. That might look, I'll use this for example, and this. 
so you could set up a gradient colored letter. However, I'll get back to the classic because I want to show you what an image would do. Undo this. Now I'll choose my image. This one will do. Insert media. And this is what it looks like. My letter has become visible and it's showing the image pattern. Now there are a few other things you can set if you opt to use an image. You can pick the image position. This is helpful if your image has a distinct pattern like mine, as this option lets you move the image so another section of it can show through the letter. If I set this to center center, we can see that the part of the image that's showing through has shifted a bit. And if I change it to top center, it moves again. And the same goes for bottom left. I'll set mine back to default. Generally, this is a useful option where you don't have to be a designer or proficient with Photoshop to create something really neat for your site. But let's carry on. The next option is Attachment, which defines how the image will behave on scroll. It has two options, scroll, which is our default. It seemingly kneels down the image, so however your visitors move, the pattern image beneath the letter stays set. The alternative is fixed, which creates a parallax-like effect that makes it seem like the pattern image shifts beneath the letter when visitors scroll along the page. But this option only works properly on desktops, so I suggest you leave this set to default. One more thing we have here is the repeat option. If your image is smaller than the letter size, then you can use this option to make your image repeat. Of course, if your image is large enough, like mine, you can set it to not repeat. But if it's smaller, you can set it to repeat, or have it repeat only along the X or the Y axis. I'll set mine to no repeat. Following that, we have the size option. Its settings include auto, which is the same as default. Then we have cover, it makes our image resize so it fits the same width as the letter. And contain resizes the entire image so it matches the letter dimensions. And finally, custom lets us manually adjust the width of the image. It's set to be in percentages by default, and if you reduce the default value, you can see how the image moves. Ok, I'll put this back the way it was. Now, I use this image because its pattern is handy for showing off the options, but there's actually a different image I plan to use for my letter. Let me remove this and add a new image instead. Ok, there. As for the rest of these options, text typography, text color, and so on, these are things we've already gone over, so there's no need to do that again. But I did want to make a few changes in the spacing style. Given that my new letter doesn't have a border, I won't need the letter padding. But I can still adjust the letter margin. Let me delink these and I'll set a negative top margin to move the letter a bit upward. And then add a bit more space on the right. There, I'm happy with this. So, the point was to show you that there are a lot of combinations you can make with the options from the drop caps widget. How you mix and match them is entirely up to you. Now I'll just save this and we can take one last look at the widgets page. Having gone over the options in the back end, you should now know how to make all of these. And here you can see some examples whose design you can mirror. But you can also easily create something unique. You just need to decide which of the possibilities offered by the drop caps widget work best with the style and design of your site. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its drop caps widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.